we will now start with uh, certain important things related with deficiency symptoms. We have seen various elements, essential elements and the function they perform and the deficiency symptoms they show. Let us first talk about a term which is known as critical concentration. What exactly is meant by critical concentration is that amount or concentration of element below which the plant would show deficiency signs. So this is defined as that concentration, that concentration of element below which the plant shows the deficiency symptom. The plant shows deficiency symptoms. So, the term which is given to that minimum concentration below which we will start seeing the deficiency signs is known as critical concentration. The next important thing is we have seen that in certain elements deficiency we find chlorosis or yellowing of leaves which are younger. In some elements we saw that chlorosis takes place in older part or older leaves. And that depends on mobility of the elements. Let us take two examples to understand this. Say this is a plant. It is growing in soil which is deficient and we would draw leaves. Upper leaves are younger leaves. Older leaves are the lower leaves. So that we are able to see what exactly is going to happen. Here we are talking about the mobile elements. Now what exactly we mean by these mobile elements? Mobile elements are those which can move from older tissue to younger tissue. So these mobile elements are the ones which can move from older to younger tissues. If we are talking about mobile elements like nitrogen, phosphorus, magnesium, these are some examples. What exactly is going to happen? If these elements are present in the soil, then these elements would get absorbed by the roots and they would be conducted to the younger as well as the older leaves. If these elements are deficient, that means these elements are not there. Then what is going to happen? That means because of absence of these elements in the soil, now there is no absorption of these elements. But the younger plant parts are going to require this because these elements are very essential for their normal growth and development. Because these elements are mobile, they would move from older part of the leaf that is from here and they would be supplied to the younger part. Let me just go over it one more time. We are talking of mobile elements. Mobile elements are the ones which can be easily transferred from older parts to younger parts. That means if they are part of some molecule, for example, as we have taken nitrogen, say it is a part of uh, an amino acid or protein, then that amino acid or protein can dissociate to release that nitrogen. That is what is meant by it, it can be set free and it can move from older to younger. If the situation is normal, that means all these mobile elements, and we have not written all, we have just written few. If these mobile elements are present in soil, then they get absorbed by the roots, 
they are supplied to the older leaves as well as to the younger leaves. As long as they are available in the soil, there is no problem. But if these mobile elements, they become deficient, that means now they are not available in the soil. So this part gets blocked, that means now no longer absorption would take place, but their requirement in the younger cells or younger tissue is going to be there because there's these cells, they have to divide, they have to grow, differentiate. So their requirement, these elements requirement would be more in the younger leaves. So these elements, they would be released from the older cells and will be supplied to the younger leaves. That means that mobile element now has been shifted from the older to the younger leaves. No element is coming from the soil. Whatever was in the older cell has been given to the younger cell. So the deficiency symptoms would appear first in this part that is the older one. So here the deficiency symptom will be in older leaves or older parts. Another situation, we are talking about a plant in a similar situation but here we would be talking about the elements which are non-mobile. That means they are not going to move from the older to the younger ones. So here we are talking of non-mobile elements. And here we take the example of calcium. We know calcium is a part of middle lamella. It is a part of the cell wall and it is going to remain there. It is not going to get dissociated. If it doesn't get dissociated, it will not move from older to younger. So if normally calcium is available, then what is going to happen is, again, this calcium gets absorbed by the roots, transported to older as well as to the younger leaves. As long as it is available in the soil, there is no problem. But if calcium is deficient or calcium is absent in the soil, then requirement in the younger leaves is going to grow because the cells are dividing, they would need more and more cell wall formation. So this calcium is required here. In this case, when soil was not supplying it, Older tissues were supplying it. But here calcium, which is a part of middle lamella here, is non-mobile. It is not going to move from its place. So there is nothing coming from the soil and no calcium is being supplied from the older to the younger leaves. That means the symptoms are going to appear first in the younger leaves. So here we write that symptoms appear in younger leaves first. So in case of element which are non-mobile, that means they do not move from the older cells to the younger cells. Soil as long as is supplying, both older and younger would keep getting the element. As soon as there is nothing in the soil, Whatever was fixed in the older cell remains in the older cell. It is not supplied from the older to the younger. That means nothing would be reaching the younger cells and they would start showing the deficiency symptoms. Whereas when we were talking about the mobile elements, as long as soil was provided, both older and younger were getting it. As soon as there was no supply from the soil it, because of its deficiency, the older cells, they started providing that element because these elements are mobile. So here the symptoms appear in older leaves. All those elements which we have talked of, most of them are the mobile. And calcium is the only non-mobile element that we have in the list of these 17 essential elements. And that is why we have written that in certain deficiencies it appears in older and in case of calcium it appears in 
या गरीब सो दिस इज टोटली डिपेंडेंट ऑन द एक्टिव मोबिलिटी ऑफ दीज एलिमेंट्स एंड दैट इज हाउ वी क्लासिफाई दीज elements as mobile and non mobile and this is an active process so we also call it active mobility of the elements now we will talk about certain general deficiency symptoms also we will now write down certain general symptoms which we have written in almost all uh, the deficiencies and we will just list out those elements which show this the first deficiency which appears almost in every elements deficiency that is chlorosis chlorosis is the technical term given to deficiency of uh, or rather uh, loss of chlorophyll pigment and this is caused due to deficiency of nitrogen potassium magnesium sulfur iron manganese zinc and molybdenum so deficiency of any of these would result into the deficiency symptom that is chlorosis similarly we have used another term that is necrosis necrosis is a technical term given to death of the tissue and the elements which are responsible for this deficiency symptoms are calcium magnesium copper potassium their deficiency would result into necrosis the third symptoms some symptom rather which we would uh, write here is inhibition of cell division that means if cell division growth gets affected then the elements which are responsible are nitrogen potassium sulfur molybdenum and the last deficiency that we are talking about is delayed flowering fourth delayed flowering that is normally caused due to deficiency of nitrogen sulfur and molybdenum so we can see here that deficiency of one element can cause so many morphological or structural changes and in this list which we have written nitrogen is responsible or deficiency of nitrogen is responsible for chlorosis deficiency of nitrogen is also going to inhibit cell division and deficiency of nitrogen is also going to delay flowering that means one element's deficiency can have multiple effects on the plant growth and its development now in the next segment we will take up the toxic effect up till now we have talked about deficiency that means if the element is less then there are certain symptoms certain problems which are seen in case of plants are there similar problems when a particular element becomes in excess concentration in the plant that is known as toxicity so in the next segment we will talk about toxicity of these elements